Hi guys and welcome back. Now I know a lot of you out there are struggling compressing the golf ball. You're not getting that dead solid feel. The ball doesn't feel like it's smashing into the face and almost grabbing into the face for a good four or five inches through contact. That's not actually happening, but that should be the feeling that we're getting. And in order to do this, we have to come in with a nice shallow angle of attack, meaning that our club is coming down into the ground nice and shallow, taking the thin divot, almost like uh, we're taking a razor blade and just slicing the top layer of turf off the the ground, not getting deep down into the roots. That's what you see all the top players doing when they're really pure in the ball. And the second piece of that is we have to get some forward shaft lean. So as I'm coming into this golf shot, I've got to be coming in with some forward shaft lean and getting this shaft lean forward. You know, most PJ Tour pros are having the shaft lean forward at least 10 degrees with a lot of their iron shots. And that takes loft off this face and now where it has less loft, it can actually transfer more energy into the golf ball. Plus it's gonna stabilize the face a lot more. As I start to get this handle leaning forward, now I can stabilize my club face and I can feel where that is. If I have the handle leaning back, I'm flipping, the face becomes very unstable because our force is in front of the club head. That's gonna stabilize it a lot. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the missing link. What is the missing key? We've all tried to get more forward shaft lean, but it doesn't work. I have one thing that I see people do time and time again that really causes the trouble. So here's usually what I see when someone's trying to go with more forward shaft lean, if we're looking from down the line here. As they come into the, the bottom of the swing, they get a lot of forward shaft lean, they get to here, they pause, a couple swings that look like this. Well, if you look, first off, my club is about a six, eight inches off the ground. And if you look at my club face, it's wide open, it's pointing way out to the right. The reason for this is, if I have my hands set up where I would be casting, and now all I do is just push my hands forward without changing the angles of my wrist, then that face is gonna be wide open. See how I'm just turning the face wide open there? Well, I've gotta rotate my wrist to square up that face. And this is what's called twisting the grip, twisting the handle. So if you're looking at the, the butt end of this club like it's a clock, I'm gonna be actually twisting this, this handle to close the face like that. So let me show you exactly what I mean from down the line, and then we'll jump over to a face on view and I'll hit a couple mini shots doing this. So as I'm starting down, as soon as I start my downswing, I wanna feel like my left wrist is bowing up like that. So if you're looking at the logo of my glove, it's kind of turning up toward the sky. My palm of my right hand is turning out. And then as I'm coming down, that's gonna allow me to shut the face a little bit more. So as I'm coming down, there, I'm twisting to turn that face. As my club gets parallel with the ground now, I wanna see that toe starting to turn down. So I'm turning this wrist like this. If I really wanna exaggerate, maybe I'm somebody that's really struggling with forward shaft lean, struggling with uh, compression on the golf ball, I'm gonna feel like I get my hand turned as far as I can go. Almost like the leading edge of this club is all the way down toward the turf. And you can see huge bow in my left wrist. My right hand is down, just like we talk about in the system, the pet the grass drill. My right palm is down toward the ground. That's what a lot of people call covering the golf ball. I'm getting my palm down so I can deal off the club. And I want you to go ahead and do a few reps where you really feel that position. Now from there, instead of being wide open with forward shaft lean, now I can deliver the ball, I can deliver the club into the ball with deal lofted and my face is square to the target. So we're gonna try that out for a couple reps. I'm gonna go halfway down I'm turning my hands till the, the, the face feels like it's way down toward the ground. And then as I come on through, I'm gonna rotate my hips on through and I'm gonna feel like I'm de-lofting the face and my, my leading edge of my club face is square with my target out in front, which would be a straight shot. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna bring the camera over here and then we'll talk about the second half of this drill. All right, so in the first half I came down, rotated my hands, then I got to impact, my face is square. You can see how much loft I'm taking off, but that club face is square to the target this time. And it's right behind my ball. I don't wanna be doing one of these because now when I get to a regular swing to be able to reach the ball, I'm gonna flip, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and come down, pause at impact, and then I'm gonna move this ball out of the way or I'll step back here. There would be impact. And then I'm gonna release this club to where now I'm in my straight line release where I've let go of all these angles. So I'm creating a big angle of forward shaft lean, forward shaft lean at the ball, and then I'm releasing the club. You can see that my hips are straightening out as I'm doing this. The butt end of the club is turning up toward my body to allow me to release that. That's how your pros are releasing the golf club. If you're still struggling with this, let's take it even to a bigger extreme. Here's what I want you to do. 
I want you to feel like as you're coming down, logo of the glove is turning down to the ground as you're coming through, and as you release, your logo stays down to the ground. See how that's angled back? If I had a golf club in my hand as I'm doing this, I'm angled down and I'm releasing that club, and you can see how this is staying down to the ground. My right palm, so my palm is rotating, but my palm is staying down to the ground at the same time. So it's this kind of, this motion that's allowing you to release the golf club. This is a, a bit exaggerated or quite a bit exaggerated. That's what's allowing you to release, release the golf club without flipping the club to square it up. So I'm gonna put all three of these together, halfway down, boom, big angle with the wrist, leading edge, feeling like it's facing down to the ground. Impact, forward shaft lean, de-loft of the club, leading edge square to the ground. My club is gonna be behind the ball and my hips are nice and open at this position. And then as I release the club, straight line release, I've gotten rid of all these angles, so I'm not holding off. I'm letting that club go as I come on through. After I've done that, about 50 to 100 repetitions, now I'm gonna go ahead and make some nice fluid swings doing the same thing. I'll do another 50 to 100 repetitions, so now I'm really getting comfortable with this. I'm gonna be brushing the turf every single time that I do this. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and make some, let's say three quarter working into full swings and I'm really going to hit those low bullet shots but I'm not going to chop down into the ground. I'm coming in nice and level with the ground. I'm just taking off so much loft that I'm really getting those bullets to go out there. So let's go ahead and try one out now and we'll see how I do. There we go. That shot came out nice and low. Actually headed right for the flag. So really work those wrists down de-loft that club. You can see I'm not chopping down in the ground. I'm just taking loft off. Work through those drills. This is going to be the missing link. If you've been trying to do this for years and can't do it, it's because that face has been wide open and every time you make a real swing you had to flip to square it up. Good luck to you guys. Work through the drills. I'll see you soon. I guys hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a fantastic bonus for you. And we know if we really want to rip that golf ball, we want to get lots of distance, we got to have tons of lag and then we got to release that lag to get a lot of speed. And I got a video that goes over the number one lag mistake that I see being made time and time again. I'm gonna play a preview of that video. If you wanna see the entire thing, get instant access to it. Just click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a mobile device, go ahead and open up the description down below and click on the link in the description and you'll get instant access to it there. Plus you're gonna get five bonus videos from our top speed golf system. They're gonna walk you through the entire system. If you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below. Click that thumbs up button, it really helps us out. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I'll see you all soon. Remember to subscribe so you'll see our latest videos, and I'll see you in the lag video. Hi guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I want to use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.